Every one of our cars has a Lotus badge on the front, but quite frankly, you don't need it. You should be able to see it's a Lotus without the badge. That's what we call the Lotus DNA. My name is Peter Horbury. I'm the Vice President of Design for Group Lotus. The DNA has grown over years, but there is what we call a red thread running through. Colin Chapman, with Formula One cars at the time, was extremely clever in managing air. And I think that sort of design work, it's in the walls here. There was a car in the 60s, a race car, called the Lotus 30. And that was a very dramatic shape. The front fenders and the rear fenders were very pronounced, and the cockpit was sunk way down. That form language really creates that very strong, natural, and yet sporty look. That was the start, I think, of what we've been using for the last three decades or more. We're not doing retro, we're not repeating the past. I'd say we're reminding of the past. The new cars look very modern, very new, even if they do have their roots so far back. The Lotus 30, the Amira and the Elettra, all those cars have in some part the same look. That low front, the rise over the front wheel, the dip down through the cabin area, and then back over the rear wheel. Older people will probably remember the 30 and see how that has developed. Younger people who see the new cars will realize that there has been a very strong heritage running through all these years to create that DNA that we call Lotus. I think it's important that we don't just stick to one look. You know, you look at families, siblings, they're not always twins, triplets and quadruplets, nor are they the same look in different sizes. Each member of a family has their own character, but when you look at them, you can tell who the parents are. And that, to me, is enough. With the SUV, the fact that it was electric really gave us that opportunity to make it look more like a Lotus than we would have. We don't have that massive petrol engine either in the front nor behind. And one thing that helped us do with the Elettra was to recreate that mid-engine look because we could move the windscreen forward so it sits perfectly between the wheels, just as it does on the Avaya, the Elise, etc. And to do that on an SUV is only possible with, uh, with electric. So this electric revolution has created a design revolution as well. The porosity is only possible because the space to do it. We have five seats and luggage to take care of, but the intake of air and the exhausting of air out of these vents on the side and at the back really creates no buildup of air pressure. It escapes immediately, and that combination of efficient aerodynamic shape plus the ability to exhaust the air from those apertures really will help the range. I know the future and uh, it's, it's looking very good. We've already completed the next car and we're working on the following one. Using the DNA, but not in a way that's static. We're moving on. But when you look at them, I'd like people to say, I can see it's a Lotus, but I don't know why. Well, I know why, and that's enough. Being responsible for a brand like Lotus is a bit like being asked to look after the crown jewels. It's yours for a while, you know, pick it up, be careful, and then hand it on carefully. A huge responsibility. Everybody's looking to see what we do next. I'm quite confident that we'll, uh, we'll give them more than they expect.